I don't think any military wife from Iraq or Afghanistan ever thought that they could come home injured. I literally hit the floor. My horrible nightmares just came true. My first thought was, he's never gonna be able to walk again. They can describe down to the very finest detail of what's in that room, but until you actually see it, there's no way to, to make somebody understand that. Even though he was critical, nobody told us that. And a lot of times they do that because they want the family to have a last chance to say goodbye before they pull the plug. Just to see him lying there and to know that most guys were, would be in and out within three to five days and Andy's still sitting there and um, they told us that they brought us there to say goodbye because they didn't think that he was coming home. <laughs> Those beautiful blue eyes pop open and he has a respirator in and he's like, mom. He just says, mom. And I'm like, I know life as I knew it, as he knew it, was completely over. He didn't remember me at first when he came out of his coma. It took him a good week to remember who I was and a good 30 days to even talk about the kids. Took off work, you know. Oh, I don't know if we can give you time. I said, Pfft, I'm going. I left my job, I left my relationship, uh, I left all my personal belongings, and um, I didn't really care. That just became my life. I took care of him just like a mother does a child. That's the easiest way to describe that. Um, I had to feed him, I had to help him go to the bathroom, I had to help him do all of those things. When you're holding your 22-year-old adult male child in the shower and he can't wash any part of himself himself, that is your job. I don't think any of them thought that he was going to make it, but there were four others that couldn't. Who wouldn't want to take care of their husband or their spouse or their son or their daughter? And most of the time when a couple stands and gets married, you say your vows through, you know, better or worse, rich or poor, sickness and health. But I don't think a lot of times people think about the seriousness of the sickness and health part. When somebody tells you that they want to kill themselves, you know, that's a scary thing. And then at the same time, my heart's breaking because I know that he's really, really going through something. He's really having a hard time. And I almost uh, feel like I am a 24-hour therapist. And he looks to me to help him be OK. Andy was taking it really hard. He was depressed. He was angry. He didn't feel like a whole person, a whole man. He was just very um, upset, sad, and angry. Emotionally, I think that's the biggest part of caregiving. You just have to be there for anything, no matter what. Whether he wants to, you know, joke about not having limbs or whether he wants to cry about not having limbs. So, you know, you just have to be there for every bit of it. What if he gets an infection? You know, what do I do? We were always one infection away from dying. That's when my real caregiving began. My role had totally changed at this point. I was no longer Shiloh's life partner. But now the person to help him live his life in a totally different sense. I used to be a lot more optimistic and each day's a new day and I, 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 I don't so much feel that way today. I have, have to stay positive and I have to make it work because they don't have that option.